This is Kristen Hedgecock. And I'm Ash Matson. You're listening to Apta Sophia, which means useful wisdom in the pursuit of biblical womanhood. All right, we're just going to jump into our episode now. Um, I'm not going to tell you what number it is because literally every time I have it's told wrong. you it's episode number five, number six, number whatever, we've been wrong. <laughs> so it is a new episode. It's a new episode. My name's Ash Matson. I'm here with my beautiful co host, Kristen Hedgecock. Hey. Hey, oh. And we are here to talk about self control. That is the topic of our episode today. We are doing a series, just kind of picking through um, Titus 2 verses, what is it, 3 through 5? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, So this week we are taught, this week, this is another thing I do. Every other time, you guys, that you've heard me say, next week, this week, next week, we don't don't do this every week. We don't. (laughs) I just have it in my head that we do. And maybe it's the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit saying like, hey, you guys are slacking. Um. However, we actually post our episodes bi-weekly, so this time go. we are going to be talking about self-control. But before we get into our discussion on that, we are going to hit the most important point of every episode, and that is our would you rather. So Kristen, would you rather be famous al- when you're alive? I'm like, I have my short notes, be famous uh-huh. alive, unknown when die. <laughs> <laughs> so Kristen, I did not... <laughs> Didn't fill that out the way I should have. Oh, that's funny. Would you rather be famous when you're alive and unknown when you die? Or would you rather be unknown when you're alive and famous when you die? I'd rather be unknown alive and famous when I'm when I die. What I have no reason for, although so I do have reason for it. I would hate the attention. I would yeah. hate the attention of being famous when I was alive. It depends on what you'd be famous for. I think that's the qualifier there that they miss. Because what if you're famous for, like, <clears throat> farting in front of the president? Again, <laughs> I, don't know. I would want to die if that were <laughs> the reason. Uh, or, yeah. What's I a just, good famous? A good famous? Well, see, like, the way my mind works is, like, let's say I could be famous for— the cleanest house in the world. It's not. It is not clean. It it is ish. Is that even a category of fame? I I could. Okay. Who knows? I'll take it. Or the most nicely decorated house, which it's not. So I'm not going to win that award. But then I would feel all this pressure for my entire life to have the X thing that I am famous for. And so... I would just much rather be dead and be famous <laughs> for having the nicest, cleanest house or what, yeah. whatever it is, or my best banana bread. I make, I do make really good banana bread. You have such cute, like, fame aspirations, like cleanest house and best banana bread. You're such a housewife. <laughs> I'm such a housewife. That's all you can be famous That's for. That's all I can be famous for. That is where my spiritual giftings are and only is my housekeeping skills and my baking skills. Definitely not something like math or science. No, definitely you're, not that. You're a lady. You're a lady. You can't do those things. Yeah. No, I don't know why I automatically wasn't like the best labor and delivery nurse ever. That would like be Florence good, Nightingale. Yeah. I could be. I could have asked for that. But then again... I don't know, maybe. That is such a beautiful name. Right? Yeah. Florence Nightingale. I need a cooler name. Sorry, Mom. Ash Nightingale. Nightingale. <clears throat> NG. <laughs> yep. Like Wendy Darling. Wendy That's, Darling. Uh, it's a name like that, Nightingale uh-huh. Darling. Yeah. From Peter Pan. I love the name Moira. So. Moira? Moira. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In Hook. <laughs> yeah, she's totally judging me. That's so her middle in, name, right? That's her middle yeah. name. And I named like every baby Barbie. <gasps> Cute. Uh, Moira. Moira. I'm like, Angela it's the most Donald. beautiful name in the world. Yeah. None Moira. of my children are even named Moira. 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 <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> it is not that. You grew out of that face. Cora could be Moira. Moira. It's such a weird noise. It is Moy, yeah. but that's what I loved about it I when I was so five. I am so sorry if you have the name Moira. Your name is perfect. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Ash totally hates your name. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. 
I just I have liked never it. Met just him, remember that. Yeah, Kristen. <laughs> Kristen's being so nice, and I'm like, that sounds fictitious. Let's <laughs> rail it. Let's rail her. Wendy Moira, Angela, Angela. Wendy Moira. Mm-hmm. It Angela, is Angela. That, darling. That's what I remember. That's what I remember, too. Okay. But it could be one of those things. What is the, oh. What is that effect? Babe. No, I cannot remember. I'm not smart enough to know. No, I don't. No, it's like um, Shazam. Sinbad in Shazam. What are you talking about? <laughs> it doesn't exist. It's a movie that you think does exist. There's like Shaq with Kazam, oh. and then there's Sinbad with Shazam. Yeah. And a lot of people remember that there was a movie called Shazam with Sinbad, uh-huh. and it does not exist. And it's, it's like— it's, it's an actual effect. I'm going to look it up right now. Um, cause I was just thinking maybe our Wendy Moira, Angela Darling was one of those. It was a hook. It maybe, was a hook. Maybe there was no Angela and it's. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Wendy I Moira, know, Angela Darling. I have just had a long day <laughs> and I cannot remember what it's called. Um. <gasps> There's a Reddit thread. Oh, Mandela effect. That's what it's called. Mandela effect. The Mandela effect. You should look into it. I'm not going to go into it too much right now. But there are a whole series of happenings in the world where people will remember something uh-huh. from pop culture that never existed or or history or something like that. Uh-huh. Um, and, and Shazam was the one that got me because I remembered that. And I just was like, <gasps> there's a Reddit thread that has the cover because everyone's, everybody's trying to prove that it actually did happen. And I have a... Oh, I can't get sucked into It's every couple of years I get sucked into this. <laughs> well, now I'm going to okay. have to look it up after this. Wendy, okay. Wendy Moira, Angela Darling. Pretty sure that Yes, was. it is. Okay. Yes, there's no Mandela effect okay, involved good. in this. That it's is actual her name. thing. Okay, okay. my bad. Side tangent. Um, yeah, I think it would totally depend on um, what I was famous for. And I can't, I can't imagine what I would be famous for. Like if you're a rapper, and you're gonna be famous for rapping, you want to you want to be you famous be when famous you're alive, for, right? That's a part of the rap game. If you right. didn't know, <laughs> it's it's important. It's important. You need you need a good rep. But if it is for yeah, I love what you said about not wanting to have the pressure to live up to your own fame. Mm-hmm. That is such a good such a good point. It is so much easier to be a nobody. Yeah. That's Where what I want to be. You, babe, <laughs> I couldn't remember what the Mandela effect was. I was shouting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So um, on our next episode, this is the question that we are going to be asking everybody to answer. So head over to our Facebook or our Instagram and weigh in. Would you rather be 11 feet tall or 9 inches tall? Inquiring minds want to know. All right, so now we're diving into our discussion on self-control. So I'm going to pull up the verse. We're going to read the verse real quick <clears throat> so that you know where we're, where we're getting this from. And, and you know what's a really good way to have self-control? What's that? Do a study on self-control. It's kind of like Ooh. praying for patience this week right. in my house. I texted Ash <laughs> last, this morning, last night. Yeah, this morning. This morning. And I'm like, you know what's super humbling is when you're snapping at your children and your husband. And then, because you're like, now I got to go upstairs and go write my notes out on (laughs) self-control. As I just am like, "Ah!" Yes. I'm like, instant, like, conviction. So that has been my week as I have learned how to have more self-control in taming my feelings. Yes. It, yeah. <clears throat> Lest you think we have arrived. This one we bit me not. right in the butt. <laughs> yeah. And well, I, I can speak for me. I have not. Yeah. And luckily, I don't think there's any single person who can bring the word of God to someone and say, I have every right to bear this message because I personally live this out. Mm-hmm. No way. And by God's grace, we're talking about the word of God as our standard and not our our own personal lives as the standard. Thank goodness. You guys would all be wop, 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 falling yeah. on your face just like <laughs> us <laughs> if you were following us. Um, all right. So we're in Titus 2, 
Um, so we're going to just start in verse 3 for some context. Um, Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children. So head over to our past episodes if you want to hear our discussion on those. And now we're moving into the next part of the verse. To be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands that the word of God may not be reviled. So we're going to be diving into each of these categories, self-control, purity, what it means to work in the home, kindness, submission. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) That's going to be a fun episode. Mm -hmm. Um, So this week we are, this week, this episode, episode. we are talking about um, self-control. Yep. So Kristen, do you want to give us the definition for self-control biblically? Yeah, I was looking up some different definitions um, from different commentaries and um, sermons. And just the general consensus is self-control in this context is related to um, someone who is wise, who is prudent, who is discerning, who's of sound mind, exhibits good judgment, Um, So those are all attributes and things that, um, fruits of someone who is self-controlled. And just for a little background um, for Titus, um, to, yeah, for Titus, sorry, Paul was addressing false teaching and he exhorts these believers in, um, in Titus 2.4 to not abandon our godly responsibilities in the pursuit of worldly passions. And, um, you know, he's just admonishing the church in, Cre- in Crete um, to, I think it's Crete. I think you're right about that. Yeah, I think I'm right about that. Don't quote me, but I think I'm right about mm-hmm. that. Uh, yeah, to um, yeah, to be to be set apart, um, to pursue things um, in a godly way, and you know, I think it's important to um, just to kind of note. Just today, we we have the same issue that we as women still fall for the temptation to pursue things in a way or for, yeah, to pursue things in a way that is not godly. And we still have this little voice inside of us that is like, hmm, did God really say you couldn't do this? Did God really say you couldn't do that? And then in pursuit of all those things, in pursuit of career, even in pursuit of family, how we look at family, um, we've adapted and adopted to um, pursuing them through worldly perspective. So um, all these admonitions are to kind of counter that. Right. <clears throat> yeah. There are count- countless admonitions to be self-controlled Yeah. all through Scripture. So many verses. Um, I will list them in our show notes for this episode because going through that and seeing how— how central this is to the Christian life is important because this is kind of like a general all encompassing mastery of your own passions and desires. Um, Alistair Begg says self-control means that every dimension of our lives is brought under the mastery of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's to rule over yourself, your flesh. Um, even needing to have self-control, this this constant admonition to be self-controlled, it indicates that our nature and our impulses are going to be something that we have to rule over. It's not something that we can follow. It's not a matter of just letting letting our impulses drive us or taking our hand off the wheel and trusting that where we're going is in the right direction. It mm-hmm. will never be in the right direction if you are not actively taking control of yourself. Yeah. Um, the things that we're called to do too, as women and just generally in the Christian life are counterintuitive to our flesh, to put it mildly. 
their foolishness to the flesh. Everything in us is naturally going to tell us that what we're doing is ridiculous. Yeah. So we we can't trust our gut. Um. So when I read this and it says to teach women to be self controlled, um. Just thinking about my own experience as a wife and a mother, and what it looks like to die to myself in my role here in the home when I am serving my husband and serving my children and teaching them and feeding and wiping boogery faces and changing <laughs> diapers. Mm-hmm. All of that, you know, there's there's a good reason why the world says, oh, that's beneath you. Mm-hmm. How could you lower yourself to that? How could you settle for that? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, yeah, you're not reaching your potential. Yeah, you exactly. need to pursue some you need to pursue your potential it's too hard yeah that's another thing is when you there's like this concern for women when you start having more children mm-hmm. people see that you're adding adding children to your family yeah. and um especially people who have a small family mindset will say you know i'm i'm wor- i'm just a little worried about you i feel mm-hmm. like this is hard work it's too much for you <laughs> You're stretched so thin. I've heard this so many times. Uh-huh. Like, whoa, you have your hands full. Like in a condescending, yeah. Like, oh, you poor thing. Like, yeah. Why are you doing this to yourself? Like, it's not worth it. It's just everything in you and everything in other people is saying, like, your work here in the home is not worth it. Mm-hmm. It's not worth the suffering because mm-hmm. it is hard work. It's not worth the sleeplessness. It's not worth the exhaustion and the and the constant struggling with your impulses to be angry and to yeah. X, Y, Z. Well, and you're even allowed, like our our culture says, it's okay. Like it gives you justification for sinning. Like right. you do have your hands full and we are all in this alone together and mm-hmm. we are all homeschoolers and it's okay to be angry and yell at your kids. Like right. I have heard people like real life people, people, you know, um, that I'm just in, in life with say, say these things. And I, I just am like, nope. Right. It's only natural. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's only, only natural. natural you, you, you are way. allowed to vent. You're allowed to show your feelings. You're allowed to do all these things. And not that we like being a Christian equals being a stoic and emotionless and apathetic. Not at all. I wish. But right. <laughs> It would be so much easier. I was going to say it'd be so much easier. I wouldn't sin nearly as much. Um, But uh, yeah, so not at all. But like um, that too, we need to show dominion over. Like our emotions, we need to show mastery over. Um, You know, there's so many scriptural warnings about people who, you know, give in to anger and what that does. Um, So... Right. Yeah. And yeah. we'll say to ourselves, like, I just, I, I have every right mm-hmm. to just, oh gosh. And the Holy yeah. Spirit's like, yeah, Ashley. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, Ash. Yeah. You're giving yourself the best advice here. <laughs> you have every right. You, you are tired. Yeah. Nobody sees you. Yeah. Nobody sees how hard you're working. Nobody understands where mm-hmm. you're coming from. Yeah. You know, like be angry. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Raise your voice. Yeah. You need you need to get You can be snappy with your husband. Right. I'm saying this to myself. This was my week this week. You can be <laughs> snappy with your husband. He right. didn't do the dishes and he was home all day with the kids, you know, or whatever. Right. Like, you know, no. Any reasonable Not person in your shoes yeah. would do the same thing. Yeah. Well, that's that's right. It it does right. come naturally. Any reasonable to us. sinner, right? <laughs> who is also in your sinful shoes? Who is reasoning sinfully? Who is reasoning sinfully yes. will also sin. Yes, you are <laughs> yes. correct. Yes, it does come naturally. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, any other person in your shoes would do that because we're all wicked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is this like clinging, and there's so much of this too in listening to sermons about self control. So much of this is about clinging to yourself instead of dying to yourself. Did my cat scare you? Yeah, I thought it was a snake. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. I can totally see how you would mistake my cat for a snake. It's, 
I have no idea. I think I just saw the tail, like, yeah. make a snaky thing. She's got a long tail. And I forgot that there was a cat behind me. Make a and thing. all I saw was a snaky thing. And I thought, where did that snake come from? Yeah. <clears throat> so we're, okay, so we've sufficiently um, defined self-control. Yeah. Um, just a few verses to consider. Um, because I really want to put this in the context. Self-control really is a warring against your own flesh. Mm -hmm. It's a warring against your sin. Um, and yeah, so here's, here's one to consider. First Peter two, verse 11, beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Mm -hmm. Your flesh is waging war against your soul. Its natural passions, its natural desires are at odds with you. Mm -hmm. And in war, the outcome is death mm -hmm. for one party or another. Um, James 1, verses 14 through 15. Each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So your own desires are going to lead you into sin and into death. That is what is in you apart from you very actively seeking out what is God's will and how do I submit to it. So controlling yourself again is just is not uh, every so often when things get really bad, I need to jump on and grab the reins. It is a constant right. minute by minute thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, Kristen's been reading. The Mortification of Sin, and we were just talking yes. about this. Oh, but, great quote I have here. Good. So this is a quote from John Owen from Mortification of Sin. Um, it says, We need to attack our lusts daily with spiritual weapons, even when we think that that lust is dead because it's quiet. We must labor to give it a new blow, new wounds every day. And that is so like sin, and that so is like, um, yeah, the way we struggle. We think we're so on top of it because we haven't had X, Y, or Z, and we let our guard down. And then, like this week, um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a really rough week, really bad attitude this week. Um, yeah, I just didn't do all the things that I usually do to keep myself in check, and it just came up, and it was really ugly. Mm -hmm. Um so, yeah, I just thought that was such a really good, um, just practical thing that we need to be aware of and, um, yeah, how to mortify this, like, lack of control and lack of discretion and um, lack of good judgment. Yes. Is, yeah, recognize it. I remembered from, I, I listened to the audio book probably a year and a half ago, and one thing that I had remembered in our discussion was where he's talking about when you feel like you've mastered, and I'm not going to say this is, oh, I wish I was a Puritan. I wish I could say things as beautifully and perfectly and concisely. Like their, their outlines and the way I they know. build arguments is just so the stuff good. of dreams. I know. It's like I wish, how, I wish every conversation in my life was that way. <laughs> <laughs> that would make me so happy. But um, he, I'm not going to say it perfectly, but he was saying, that when you feel like you've nicked a specific sin in the bud where you you say, well, I've mastered my anger or I've mastered my slothfulness or I've mm -hmm. mastered something. So now I'm going to move on to the next thing. I've, mm -hmm. I've conquered that. I've, I've met that milestone. Um, now I'm progressing. And you turn your back on that particular sin. That's when it rises up and cuts mm -hmm. you down because there's no sin that we're mortifying in, in ourselves that is going to be fully more. And we know this fully yeah. mortified before we're glorified before, right. you know, the day of Christ. And so <clears throat> we just, we have to be aware that there is no sin that we're not engaging in, mm -hmm. in some way. Um, there's no category of sin. It's all going to look, it's going to look different for each person. And there's also no sin that we're ever going to master. Yeah. And we can't turn our back on anything. So again, just going right back to that, it, it is a constant purposeful thing. Um, another verse, Ephesians 4, verses 20 through 24. 
I know it's a lot, sorry. But that is not the way you learn Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him. As the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and mm-hmm. to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, to put on the new self creating, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So just really hammering home there that that is your natural disposition. That is the direction your flesh is going to drive you every time you take your hand off the wheel. Mm-hmm. Right into the ditch. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> and it makes sense then that we can see that when, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. In Galatians 5 verses 22 through 23, why self-control is included there as a fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. When you're regenerate and when the Holy Spirit is living inside of you, um, that is where that self-control comes over. There's no control over the flesh apart from the Spirit of God. Right. And that's a really important thing for us to to mention here too is that this is not a talk about pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. Right, exactly. We definitely need help. Mm-hmm. Not just help. We need somebody to take over. Jesus, take the wheel. Like in its truest context here. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> to quote to quote the great Carrie Underwood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, one of the ways that we can get an upper an upper hand, if you will, um for just trying to get more self control besides doing a study on it <laughs> um is um is just honestly um kind of taking a couple steps back just so I can collect my thoughts here. But um, we did a episode last episode or two episodes ago about the law of God and just one of the purpose of the, of the laws God of Lila, one of the purposes of the law of God is to expose sin. Like how can we know, how can we know that we're in sin if we are ignorant of the law and what it says? And, um, so we can combat uh, this temptation of the love of the world and the love of self-control and, or not self-control, but um, yeah, just we can combat this by reading the Bible and asking God to be the surgeon and to cut out the cancer in us. Um, we need to relinquish the scalpel and quit trying to self-diagnose and just just read the Bible, allow it. It is, it is sort it is, it is made to, to, to cut out, um, sin that's in our hearts and our, in our lives. And we need to not self-diagnose, um, by book, by looking at particular, um, <clears throat> words, um, word studies. Those are very popular. Um, I'm just trying to think of all the things that I think us, not just ladies, I mean, everybody does it, but just read the Bible, be in the word. And um, yeah, so that, let's see, what am I trying to say? Yeah, I'm just trying to say that you just need to be in the Bible and you need to let it pour over you and you need to let it do its work and not try to look into particulars Mm -hmm. But just be faithful in to read it. Right. And yeah. We were so. talking about this um, a few weeks ago, I think, when we were talking about anger. Yeah. And anger management. Uh-huh. And how there is like a very secular approach to it. And there's all kinds of books and there's all cl- right. kinds of, you know, people people know. Like sin is uncomfortable for the unbeliever too. Mm-hmm. Some sins they'll permit. Some sins are incredibly inconvenient. Anger is one of those sins that can really damage relationships and is very, can, um, can cause a lot of very tangible issues real quick. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of secular programs that cut out scripture Mm -hmm. in regards to how do we, how do I fix this? Right. You know, and it's not going to, it's not going to be, it's not going to bear fruit. There's Mm -hmm. no power in it because it's not the Holy Spirit. It's not the word of God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you had also touched on this with uh, in Galatians. I had, it's funny. So Ash and I don't really share too much when we do our individual studies. We just kind of come together. But I had 
kind of backed up back in Galatians 5, um, just walking in the Spirit. And uh, so Galatians 5, 16 through 17, but I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Okay, so you're not going to gratify that like, oh, I would just want to do whatever that thing is really, really, really badly. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit and the desire of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep um, you from doing things that you want to do. And so, um, yeah, so be in the word, be Mm -hmm. in the spirit, whether that's, um, you know, one little trick that I do when I'm feeling very frustrated and that I encourage my kids to do, and it just, it really works, is just, um, yeah, putting on some praise music. It is really hard to be angry and frustrated when you have some really good hymns going, and um, uh, that's just something that I do for my kids who <laughs> are really struggling with that self-control, particularly in anger. And I know that because I also struggle with patience. And, and um, yeah, so just walking in, walking in the spirit, it really does help combat those feelings and those urges. Yeah. I've... Um... I've actually, I really like to do topical study. Mm -hmm. I agree with your point that just generally you need to be in God's word consistently and the whole of it. Like get in there, be studying it. It can't just be like a, well, I have this issue now. I'm going to go pick out a few verses. Like you need. I'm feeling very angry. So I want to find all the verses that have where God is just happy. Yes. And I want to just rejoice right. in everything. Yes. So that's, I guess, what that's I was cool. more, yes. what I was talking about. And just, if you are just in the word reading it, like maybe you're unhappy because you're in sin. Maybe you're unhappy or feeling anger because right. you need to repent or somebody needs to repent to you. Like, you know, there's a, yeah. a litany of reasons. And um, you, yeah, I just think that, the Holy Spirit works and I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but you're like, Oh, I'm so angry. I'm going to read the Bible. And you're just like, I don't even care. You just open it up. And it's just, I really do think it's an act of the Holy Spirit. You're just like, Oh, and you need to repent to those who know different verse, yes. you know, or you, yeah. <laughs> bitterness rots the bone. No, not that verse. Yes. What's something that's going to make <laughs> me feel good. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that happens. And yeah. And, um, yeah. So yes, you you don't know how the Holy Spirit's going to use the Word of God, and there's so many different there's so many different facets to each passage. Mm-hmm. Like you can't plumb the depths of it. So of right. course, like yes, but one thing practically that does help me though is um, I have struggled a lot with like losing my temper and getting frustrated when I have my 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 kids and a bunch of other kids here, you know, when I'm mm-hmm. overwhelmed with fighting and all, all of these things, because, well, I, I feel like when my kids are older, <laughs> I'll be a lot better with them, which is why God gave me young kids. Cause uh-huh. I need to learn how to deal with somebody right. who is it's having all of these issues yeah. that I'm like, how is this an issue for you? <laughs> you know, like why, why are you yeah. fighting over such a silly thing? That sort of thing. So right. I, I recognize that in myself, even if on the, on the outside, I might sound like Mary Poppins, you know, when your heart Mm -hmm. is in the wrong place. And it's such a horrible feeling when you're like, you have to, you know, so I actually do go through scripture if I'm struggling Mm -hmm. with a specific sin and I will look up all the verses on anger and I will write them out and I will write out affirmations, like not in a woo woo way, but like just restating kind of um, the points from each verse As like a positive, like, this is what it's saying. This Mm -hmm. is what it's saying. And then um, I had, um, you know, times where I knew I would be most vulnerable to being overwhelmed and getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. And during those times, I didn't let myself listen to podcasts. I won't let myself listen to music. I will just listen to scripture or I'll have that note card out with all the verses written out. And I'll meditate on them. And if I have to say it over and over and over to myself until the day is over, that's what I'll do. And that's kind of, um, and I wish I could say that I am as consistent with that as I should be because I feel like that is really, sometimes that's what it takes. Like if you are really struggling with something, 
to get in there and be willing to shut everything else off and just pray and just be meditating on scripture while you're doing dishes, while you're Mm -hmm. working through whatever. Um, But yeah, so it's, it's by the help of the Holy Spirit. Um, You have to, you have to be aware of your weaknesses. Um, Some of those things are going to be really obvious yeah. I think loss of control for us, it's it's like it starts out as a high level thing where you'll see, okay, I really struggle with anger or I really struggle with sloth or I really struggle with um, just immodesty of speech or, you know, controlling my tongue. Those things, because it's again, it's like the um, negative consequences of those things are more tangible. So Mm -hmm. we're more likely to notice them and be embarrassed or, you know, whatever. Um, But then digging into our lives and like Alistair Begg said, taking every every facet of our lives and bringing it under the mastery of Jesus. The more that we read God's word and the more that we see the righteousness of God and his goodness and his holiness and his purity and why we want to be like him, like the beauty in that, the benefit in that, like how wonderful he is, why it would be wonderful for us to be like him, what it looks like to image him. We're going to see more and more ways that we can be right. controlling ourselves. Right. Um, all of this really starts in the mind, not only in acknowledging, um, but here's one verse to pull out that's super helpful is uh, Romans 8, 5 through 6. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Did you read that verse already? No, I didn't. Okay, I'm, I, no, I think it's just very similar It to is Galatians. very similar, and I was like, wait, hang on. Wait, hang on. no, okay. I had to read through it, and then I had to open up the Bible because I like, did she already read? It, she sound, read? it is so similar to the one that you were just talking yeah. about, too. Yeah. Um, a quote that I pulled from, again, Alistair Begg, we were just talking about how this guy— I mean, there are so many just, like, fire quotes from one sermon. Uh-huh. I don't know. It's he's so he's a word wizard. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but here's something that he said in his sermon on self-control. Sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a destiny. It all starts with a thought. Mm-hmm. And everything that you do comes out of yeah. what's, in, what's in your head, what's in your mind. Right. Yeah. One of the benefits of just being disciplined um, and self-controlled in the ways that we described is uh, honestly, like the more I was, th- uh, the more I've been thinking about it this week. It's just like really, like being self-controlled is so foundational. Being disciplined is so foundational to like every single aspect in struggle. Of my entire life. Like, if I was self-controlled in speech, like, I wouldn't gossip. I wouldn't slander. I wouldn't lie. Right. If I was self-controlled mm-hmm. in um, my anger, I would be patient and I would be kind and I would be loving, like, all the time. Like, all these things. And so, um, you know, there's a scripture in Proverbs. Did I open up to the right one? Yeah. Proverbs twenty five twenty eight. It says, a man without self-control is like a broken city in it is like a city broken into and left without walls. So someone who doesn't have self-control um, is like an unfortified city is another way to put it. Um, it. It doesn't have walls around it. And and I'm not talking about the bad kind of walls that society talks about of like, oh, you have walls, your walls are up. But this is like a biblical, like right. it is uh, to guard yourself. It is to protect yourself and protect yourself from what? To protect yourself from fiery darts and arrows. I mean, we do have an enemy. We do have, um, whether it be within our own thought life, whether it be within us or just um, being tempted. And so when you don't have self-control and and you lack that, like I was saying, it just makes you so open for all different, all aspects of your life to like, to just to fall, just to fall away, just to um, succumb to sin. 
And, um, yeah, I was just, I don't know. It was just a thought that I had. Yeah. Um, about that. Yeah. I, the other verse from Proverbs that's so similar to that, which kind of like is the other side of the coin is mm-hmm. whoever's slow to anger. This is Proverbs 16, 32. Mm-hmm. Whoever's slow to anger is better than the mighty and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Yeah. So we have the option of not ruling our spirit and being like a city that's broken into. Right. Or we can be the aggressor and we can be the victor in controlling our spirit. Mm -hmm. So you can either be the victim of your opponent in war or you can be the victor in this war against the flesh. By ruling over your spirit. Here's another verse that's really good in regards to this topic. Um, This is 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 through 27. Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Mm -hmm. It's not enough for us to know the right things. It's not enough for us to tell others the right things. Mm -hmm. It can't stop with head knowledge. It can't stop with biblical knowledge. It has to be applied. Not to save yourself. Right. Not to save yourself. But... To be fruitful and to run this race well. Mm -hmm. To not be disqualified, as Paul says. Yeah. I discipline my body and keep it under control. Yeah. I have kind of a longer one, too, but it talks about self-control. It's uh, 2 Peter 1, 3 through 11. It's kind of lengthy, but it was just... It's just good, I think. It says, I was trying to pare it down, but I just can't pare it down. Oh, maybe I can pare it down. I'll start at verse 5. So Second Peter 1, verse 5. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection uh, with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, so we don't just stay there, we are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from former sins. Anyway, I just thought that was just a really good... um, yeah, just a really good verse that when we make practice obedience, um, it's so much harder to follow to to fall when we have those disciplines in in place, and just easier to be steadfast and faithful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of trying to keep track of all of these little habits, like let's mm-hmm. make our primary habit one of fighting sin. Right. I make the habit of identifying and fighting sin. Yeah. That could look like a million different things, but as long as your your mind is set on I know that this is where my flesh is going to go. And if mm-hmm. I'm not aware and vigilant, my flesh is the thing that will take over. Absolutely. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is not a cruise control type thing. Right. And there is a whole camp of Christians who believe that. Yeah. I'm led by the Spirit. I don't need the Word of God. Right. That is not how this works, yeah. bro. Like, you're exactly. in big trouble because whatever you feel is not the Holy Spirit. Right. Not mm-hmm. unless it's, like, actively submitted to the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 1 Peter 4, 7, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. For the sake of your prayers. We need to be exercising self-control in our petitions to the Lord. It has to be, yeah. as Scripture says, in according to his will, we need to be praying mm-hmm. according to his will. If he's going to answer us and grant us our petitions, we need to be praying as someone who is seeking the will of God in our prayers and not our own fleshly desires. You ask and you do not have because you ask wrongly according to your your own desires. I don't know the reference for that, but that just came to mind. Mm-hmm. I know that's a Bible verse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know. I was thinking about that when, not about that verse, but I had all these like verses in my head and I'm like, one day I will memorize the, the addresses 
<laughs> that these verses belong to. Yes. I am the worst. Like, I can remember the verse, but, man, I'm like, no, what book was that? I'm pretty sure Paul wrote it. So that, you know, narrows that down to 90% of the New Testament. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's always hard for me. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Mm -hmm. So not only do we have to worry about our flesh, we have to worry about the adversary, which is something that I just very conveniently do not think about. (laughs) I don't. I'm I'm totally guilty of, you know, I think it was C.S. Lewis who says there's two errors that we can Uh can commit in regards to our thoughts about— the devils and one mm-hmm. is to give them too much power and one is to not, not enough. Yeah. acknowledge them at all. I think that yeah. was in the screw tape letters or the, yeah. the preface for it. But I'm definitely the latter. There are just so there are just so many verses, you guys. Um but yeah, I just I think we've covered a lot. Yeah. Be connected to your church family. Mm-hmm. Um be confessing sin to one another. Mm-hmm. Be aware of um of your vulnerability, be aware of the things that are triggering you in your day-to-day life with your husband, um, with your children, in the management of your home, any any point of weakness there. Confess that to the Lord and seek him out in his word and get someone to come alongside you in accountability. Like we said, you know, the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to accomplish this in you. Um, the Holy Spirit is the one who sanctifies us. It's not our... Uh, fleshly like pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps but god's word gives us many tools to use many practical tools um so make use of those and we will be back on our next episode talking about purity that's the next one so until then uh, i will let Kristen take us out all right go love god go love your husband go love your kids Cool.